Shalom if we have any questions from the night before I was not on on the live but uh, just watching. Any questions we have? As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Alaikum When we recite Ya Aziz Ya Razak, what's the reality behind it? A lot. Bismillah. Yeah, that's a, is a is a is a is a blessing from Allah to the reality of Mawlana Shah Nafshaban and Mawlana Shah Nafshaban just for his his uh, his Nafshbandiya students that Ya Aziz a Sifat of Allah that nothing can stop it if um, Aziz takes the case it uh, moves through everything. That no, no one can slow it down, nobody can stop it, nothing. And Allah is Aziz and, and force and power behind that. And Ya Razak is that the rizq and sustenance for the soul. And the rizq and sustenance for the soul that comes will also change all the rizq and sustenance for the physicality. And when we say, Bahaqqa Bahuddin Shah Naqshba Muhammad, we say, Bukhari. That over everything we're eating, we're asking from these Allah's names by the reality in which Allah taught a reality to Mawlana Shah Naqshaban and Mawlana Shah Naqshaban sharing that with his community. That by the Sifat al Aziz that Allah will, will dress anything that they eat and drink and the Razak that He send the rizq and sustenance for them clear from any difficulty and any any hampers or anything that would be blocking it. And by the reality of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban and when that reality begins to open is like a purplish light that dresses the soul and uh, blesses the soul. So alhamdulillah over anything we eat and drink is to make the zikr of Allah Ya Aziz Ya Razak the haqq of Ahuddin Naqshbah Muhammad al Bukhari. InshaAllah and to be dressed by that blessing and to, and to be given from that reality. And Allah is, is infinite in how much Allah gives to His servants. So the infinite, infinite amounts of rewards for the servant who seeks out realities. That's why people who don't seek out realities, they, they have such a difficult existence. One is that they… they close their mind and they close the door to Allah's ni'mat and Allah's blessings and, and Allah's dresses and, and mercies. That mercies are un, unimaginable, uncomprehensible how much Allah has given to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad But He wants us to seek is through humility to, to seek these realities, to seek always knowledges, to seek, seek out an understanding. And for everything there would be thousands of layers of understanding inshaAllah, alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam alhamdulillah. Can you uh, speak about magnetism and how it's connected to our iron? Magnetism and how it's connected to the iron? So that we have the whole articles on that and the importance of of our energy and building the energy and, and doing the meditation and all the practices with the meditation is important. How to, to make the connection, how to build the qudra, how to keep the wudu, all of those we don't want to go into that because we've done that so many times. People listening will say, oh they've heard this before. But the magnetism is the whole way of qudra and energy. And to build the energy, to, to have the solid foundation and everything that we're doing is based on energy. That uh, keeping the sunnah is to seal your energy, all of your practices to bring the energy. And then once you have that energy, where does that energy go? It goes onto the iron of the body and that becomes the nazma, the qudra. And from that iron it dresses the heart, 
you know, from the breath and then from the heart goes to the essential organs of the body. So the whole movement of energy is going to have that significance of, of that iron and, and the blood and the cleanliness of what we eat and what we drink, all the things that would affect the blood. And then we know that the opponent uh, shaitan is moving in the blood and that's what Prophet taught is that shaitan moves in the blood. So then how to fight that shaitan and, and how to restrict his access to that power and to that qudra and that's the food and the drink and the breathing and all the practices. When the servant is heedless of all of those things then shaitan is rampant within his blood system and wreaking havoc inside as well as outside, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Mawlana, can, can Basira be granted to non-Muslims even if they drink and smoke? Can Basira be granted? To a non-Muslim? Even if what? They drink and smoke. Basira? Now Ahli Basira is a level of purity in which Allah when the servant is clean and pure, Allah opens a Divine light and a Divine vision which has to do with the purity of the soul and when they look through the power of their soul they can look to wherever Allah, Allah grants each their daraja. That's not something that can be just achieved or given or, or somebody say they have it. This is a, a, a confusion with the people who play with the jinn, all these new age people and the aura people and Buddha people and they're playing with jinn. So you imagine that the jinn world for example is like having a, like a special funky glasses <laughs> that you, you meet them, you pay homage to them, you join their association and all of a sudden they give you this bizarre spiritual glass that you put on and you start to see things. But this is not you seeing from a good heart and Allah opening the heavens. You're seeing the material world, you're seeing all these beings in this material world, you're seeing you know false colors in this material world, you're seeing them as if they're beautiful angelic beings and many of them are very demonic. That's why when someone can't really see and you only see through the glasses they gave you, that can be very dangerous and that's why all these people who sign up, you know these, these movie stars and rock stars. When, when they give their homage to the Dajjal, you think that they're not seeing something? They're just you know doing empty things out of excitement or as soon as they paid homage the devil opens up all sorts of sights and visions for them and all of which are illusions and that's why Allah said, this dunya is but an illusion and you're dealing with the master race of illusions are, is their nefarious breed and the dunya is all about following them and having false visions, false sort of uh, sights, seeing colors and auras and all, all of which is, is, uh, is, is probably 99% rubbish. And that's because of those beings giving them you know special equipment and they don't even know that they've been given that equipment but they've been given like uh, glasses from them, they've been given something to wear and then with that they're seeing things and, uh, and those are all incorrect scenes because they're hiding who they really are with the illusions of something beautiful. And many videos on YouTube these people like made deals with the seance and with devils and they sit in the room and they say, beautiful light came, say, I am your spirit guide. And later they found out after they did very evil things that this spirit guide is asking for like all sorts of horrific stuff, it's not something normal. Something that you know started off maybe with a beatific vision became something very blasphemous and horrible. Only then they realized these were demonic creatures, you know, and they veil themselves from who they really are. And that's why I say, if you don't put your blood, sweat and tears into it and don't, don't even look at it, it's not going to happen.
So it means our way is based on struggle, based on support, based on uh, sincerity, based on all of these practices because you have to pass all these levels of security that Allah finds your character to be secure. You can't come and go and run and come and run and come and run and do all sorts of crazy things and you're failing all your security tests. So if anyone has ever applied for a government security position or even just the police, some of the kids want to take a job with the police, they give them 30 pages of background checks. They want to ask your friends, who are you and what your character is. If that's for the police, what do you think for Allah? That they're not going to be doing background checks on somebody and they're not going to test them and see, how come they ran away? And then they came back and then they ran away and then they came back. They, they cut off, they go for months then they come back, they cut off. Every time somebody is doing that, they're making their path much more difficult. Because you know if you fail a background check, the police won't even look at you again. You say, oh sorry you know, a couple of my friends uh, they gave a bad report. You can't say, oh, I'm going to fix that and I'll do this again in six months. It's just you can't fix it. But Allah has a rahman and mercy. So if, if people are you know, doing all sorts of crazy things and then think that they're, they're going to pass Allah's background check, it's not going to happen. And that's why they… that's why it's… Uh, it's wajib al it's mandatory to follow a living guide. That the Qadris who say that they're connected to Shaykh Abdul Qadir completely void. That is an impossible statement. That only who have chained, who have trained and they have trained and they have trained, they know that that's virtually impossible to establish that relationship without a living guide that is continuously training you, flipping you, pushing you. And uh, every type of characteristic to come out from you because all the bad has to come out through the testing, through the imtihan, through the du'a of the shaykh. The living shaykh has to be preying on you, you have to be fighting to come to the attendance, you have to be fighting to log on, you have to go through sickness, through every type of poverty, through every type of hardship with a living shaykh that continuously putting fires and fires and all his shaykh putting fires. Because the, the living world is the difficult challenge that that shaykh has to be pushing the student in this dunya and then that shaykh has to take the student into their barzakh reality. But you're telling me just a student can sit from their dunya reality and no training and enter into the barzakh reality? And even to the greatness of these awliya they have no reason to reach out to do that because then it becomes tariq al-adab of the uh, adab that Prophet established which is wajib al-taqleed, fa'atiullah, atiya rasul, ulul amri minkum. So why would a wali put out something against what Prophet has established on earth? That obey Allah, obey the rasul and be in the hands of ulul am. A physical ulul am has to know you and is responsible for you and is testing you in your loyalty and your, and your approach and, and is teaching you from knowledges and physically with you so that every time you, you start to hallucinate and, no, oh, no, you know God is talking to me directly, then they can grab you and say, no, no, you, this, you're, you lost your mind now, you've entered now into delusions and, and the delusional world will take you. And that's why they have to keep calibrating with a physical hand. Because we, we gave the levels of the nafs, right? From Amara they were doing completely crazy things to Lawama and then Lawama they start to come under all of the illusions of shaitan that now you're a high person, you're, you're feeling good, you're doing good things and then they become angered quickly because they thought they had achieved good things and these are very dangerous levels. Without a living guide is not… is impossible. Now that's the rule, if there's an exception that one person Allah wants to guide and he's not a murid but he's murad, that Allah granted that individual to be sought out. That, that is the exception, that's never the rule. The rule is to follow in the way of Sayyidina Muhammad that the companions they needed to reach their reality by virtue of their association with Sayyidina Muhammad and that's 
where his whole religion was established and they became Sahabi. And then the companions of the companions which we call Tabi'een, they had to follow the companions and Prophet described, follow any of my companions, they're like stars. So same, same. And that's why it's so important to have living guides. So one whom calling themselves Qadri, thinking they're attached without a living Qadri shaykh, it's not possible. And the many of them will fall under the, the, the whims of shaitan and if you don't have a living guide they're guiding you and imagine then now all the jinn were jumping in on these people and playing with them and giving them illusions. That's why a lot of them when they come and ask questions and email they're, they're talking from like jinn stuff and those are not because they achieve that in their practices with the living shaykh. The, what's this, what's this latif of this, what's this, what's all, all these things that the jinn are throwing at them. And those are not necessarily the haqqaiqs or even the way of approaching the haqqaiq because they ask a little bit more and they did nothing. And then they're talking about all these knowledges that the jinn have read off to them and it's not established like that. So why do you need to know for example all the levels of latayafs and how to open it and what's the zikr of this latayaf, what's the zikr of that latayaf when the shaykh knows for a fact. Unless you're in a very deep muraqabah state with the shaykh and that you're in continuous hudur and presence with that shaykh, you learn how to go deep into a fana in which you lost yourself and the shaykh appeared within you, that knowledge won't be conveyed to you because you didn't reach a security level. This is not about, oh recite Allah, 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 Allah. oh it opened, not recite Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman, ya. oh it opened. Then you, you would be like a suitcase just with a combination anyone could open. And Allah is not giving the heavens away like that. But the first step of all these realities is you have to get rid of you and you have to be deep into muraqabah, deep into tafakkur, deep into the presence of the shaykhs so that you become non-existence and their fires, their lights are dressing within your reality and from their reality to your reality will begin the conveyance and as a result of that conveyance then they wrote their books and described these realities. But none of it was meant that you would just read it, go get it and, and take off because they know none of it is achievable without the connection of the muraqabah and the strong connection with the fires of the shaykh. And that requires good character, right? So you can't run, come, run, come, run, come, leave for, for months, come back. There won't be any faiz on the shaykh on that student because they're not even passing their security codes. And that's why when people get involved in who came and who left and who ran away, who came back, don't mind your business, don't worry about anything. Just worry about your grave and yourself because you don't know who's not passing their security clearance. So you don't have to go out and grab somebody to bring them back, they're not passing their security clearance. That's, that's you know that's why just everybody has to worry about themselves and their grave, their practices because now more and more security testing is coming because of the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi Dajjal walking on the earth. We see the fitna of everything everywhere. So these are very difficult times and testing times inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam uh, What is the reality behind, behind us having beards? Uh, the reality behind us having beards for the men. <laughs> yeah. InshaAllah has a, has a inshallah, immense barakah for those who can have it, if Allah allows it, whatever Allah has written. There are certain cultures that their beards are, are a little bit thinner and they don't have so much hair but has an immense reality. Has an immense reality they say that the angels occupy the beard. So as long as the servant allows the beard to grow, it's, Allah fills it with the angels that move in between and that gives the servant a, a majestic haybah so that like a lion which is the king of this, this, uh, this jungle, the lions of heaven they have a majestic dress in which Allah gave to them is the shortening of their hair and the growing of their beard and the angelic reality that begin to grow upon that beard. And then from the latayaf, there's a latayaf on the throat 
that the important lataif for the energy, for the speaking, for, for whatever is coming onto the servant towards the heart, then that beard also has a protection and angelic blessing on that lataif. So everything Allah has given to us has immense realities and immense purposes and everything from the majestic sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad has again immense blessings. So the, anyone who revives the majestic sunnah whether it's a ring, a staff, a beard, a hat, a kufi, a hoofs for your feet, anything that we can think of to revive in a day when people are leaving the sunnah Allah will dress the servant with the reward of 70 martyrs and they become muhiya sunnah, the revivers of the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad so alhamdulillah so many ways Allah has given us to, to draw near to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad by actions that, that may, people may not deem significant but have immense importance to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and immense power and, and blessings until one day we, we understand the realities of these powers then alhamdulillah we're, we're set and all dressed in power. Until then that's why wajib al-taqlid is follow the shaykh. Imagine somebody who follows their mind and they want to read fiqr, it'll take them 20 years before they realize they should have their head covered, they didn't get to that book yet. So they're walking around with nothing on their head, so but you, you didn't understand that all the energy that coming and then it's escaping from the, the top of your skull and you keep the hat. Because it's a sign of humility and that when you put your hat on feel the hand of Allah upon your head and that He's watching you and that His hand is upon your head and controlling you. And the reason people don't want to wear their hat is they want to blend in with everyone else and then they can have more nefarious activities. But we said before the sunnah at the, at the very most basic level is a protection for us. So people look and say, well, you know, with these guys they, they look a certain way and that's exactly what Allah wants is for us to look like we are Muhammadiyoon and we don't belong in certain places and it's a protection for us, inshaAllah. <coughs> uh, ya Sayyidi, what does our flag with the phoenix shape represent? Walaykum As Salaam, we have that uh, on that nice video. <laughs> so Allah on the top Muhammadun Rasulullah is the head and uh, guidance of every reality and Izzatullah is, is, is the crown and the might and uh, Ya Ali and the swords of Imam Ali are its wings and represents the Huma, the, the phoenix and that the phoenix to destroy every type of bad character and that the cage of shaitan not to contain the phoenix, that with the support of Allah the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and support and guidance and the madad and support of Imam Ali salam, that to destroy every obstacle and every cage that shaitan tries to put upon the believer. So <coughs> alhamdulillah <coughs> inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, If the Imam of the house is not following tariqah, will the children in the household be protected from negative energy if only the mother does the awrad and the salawats? InshaAllah <coughs> that for Allah's rahmah and mercy <coughs> that InshaAllah Allah Mulani used to describe that for, for the women whom are carrying the faith of their home and or they're the only person in their home that Allah will assign spiritual beings to be the imam of that home. It's not something difficult for Allah to send an angel and the angel will be the imam of the home because it is whatever Allah has destined. 
you can't go beyond you know the, 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 the hands and fingers that Allah has given to us. If a condition is, is not being met and the person is not stepping up to their responsibilities and the person who is and is pious and trying their best to safeguard their families and, and safeguard themselves, then alhamdulillah nothing in Allah's way is ever lost and Allah is very easy to provide a spiritual being who will be the imam of the house. And there are so many spiritual beings in the house of tariqah families. We said that as soon as they get their taweez and they take their initiation, the first thing is the budal, nujab, nuqab, awtad, wal akhyar, the malaika and jinn will all be dispatched to that person's home to begin to safeguard them and live amongst them. They have to deal with the problems of that unseen world. So as much as we make their atmosphere to be good and pleasant and pious and, and good fragrances and, and cool the azan and do your prayers then they're praying there and they're bringing an immense amount of blessings. And it's not something difficult for Allah to provide an angel and the angel will be the imam of the home inshaAllah and give all the reward to that family. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is the key component to opening the heart love? Is the key component to opening the heart love? The key component to opening the heart is good character and having discipline against badness and bad character because love is an extremely misunderstood word. People can think they're very loving but uh, you know they're, they're harsh with their mouth, their words, their characters, yelling, screaming, no. So love is based on, on good character to open the heart. So what Allah wants, adabana rabbi fa ahsanu fi tahdeeb. Prophet's description is that, I have been sent to perfect the character of my nation. And that what Prophet claim claim for his nation is, I didn't come here to make everybody hafiz of Qur'an but adabana rabbi fa ahsanu fi tahdeeb that they become the best of, of, of their khuluq and character. When Allah sees that their character is good, they took away qadab which is the opposite is kufr. They took away all this yelling, screaming, all this, uh, this uh, bipolar anger that sparks too fast and, and goes too, too, too much in extremes. All of these have to be taken out and then Allah grants that heart a sincerity because they're struggling with themselves. They're fighting to keep themselves to have good character. As a result Allah will begin to lift their servant. When the servant is being lifted through all their strugglings, all their disciplines, this is years of, of, of fighting themselves, years of being put into all sorts of conditions in which they stayed quiet. You know they, 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 they took the criticisms, they took the sarcasms, they took everything, stayed quiet, stayed quiet, stayed quiet, exhibited good characteristics, Allah begin to dress their heart with sincerity. Then we said at level 5, 6 and 7 of the soul, Allah is now dressing their soul with Divine Muhammad. That's something that can't be imagined that when Allah puts Divine love, قُلْ إِنِ كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَتَابِيُونِ That He accepted your فَتَابِيُونِ that you followed Prophet in the correct way, then Allah grants you هِبُّكُمُ Allah. That I'm going to grant you now my Divine love and which they, they feel Allah's loving embrace and the proximity of what's meant by when Allah describe, I'm closer to you than your jugular vein. They feel Allah in everything, every tear that comes they feel Allah in that emotion. You know we said before they can look at the flower and they see the love that Allah put into that flower and the expression of its love and how it gives its fragrance and its perfume to show its love for the reality. So that those are the very high stages of Divine love. So when love is granted to a servant then Allah has granted them His Divine grace and His Divine mercy, that's faith. 
at that at those levels that servant has faith. But for people just to think that they're going to be loving and their heart will open, that has to be tested. So if they are in a path for heart opening, they have to be tested with good character, good character, good character. As Salaamu Alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Do we receive guidance or inspirations in heart for dunya matters as well sometimes or are we supposed to use our brain and then decide always? No, we said don't use your spiritual connection for dunya matters. Just use your brain for your dunya matters. Otherwise you'll get the wrong answer in your spiritual connection. If you start to connect your heart and, and you know, I, I want to do this and I want to get this job and I want to get this money and I want to do this, I want to do that, you'll end up talking to yourself like a mirror but you won't know that, you'll think that you're talking to them. And that's because you're using the channel for the wrong purpose for yourself and for your nafs. So those physical inspirations you just have to sit and ponder it and think what's the best choice for what physically I have to be done. And your life is like a chess game, every step you have to keep thinking in every direction what will be the ramification, what will happen and try to make the best choice and then preserve your spiritual channel for how to connect, how to get your energy, how to draw near to Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Good, alhamdulillah. Inna sharif al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ali sahbi kiram wa la mashayikhina fi tariqat al-nashbandiyyat wa al-aliyya wa sa'ira wa sa'adatina wa siddiqina al-fatiha.